Hi, welcome back to Linux. We're going to continue with our WordPress installation and some of our system administration and maintenance tasks. So let's go ahead and get started. So first, we're gonna create a backup script. Now, where do you put the backup script and things of this sort? Well, we know that we have um, an opt directory on the system and we can put our scripts all in slash opt right there and that's a fine place to put it but sometimes we include passwords in these scripts and we can argue whether that's a good or bad idea generally speaking it's a bad idea but sometimes it is actually unavoidable so you can base 64 encode some things make it not look so obvious but in any case sometimes there are passwords required so in that case we may want to do slash root that way the only people can get to it are people who are, have root access on our server and if you have root access on the server then the chances are you should be allowed to see the passwords <laughs> you already know the passwords so you're good um, but you know that's another discussion for another time with a gazillion caveats so let's go ahead and get to our backup script so we're going to put this in the root directory because there is a possibility we could include passwords in our backup scripts or some sensitive information and nobody can get to the root directory except for root so i'm going to go ahead and call this vi and i'm using vim so if you don't have vim go ahead and do an app get install vim so be sure that you have vim on there and also if you want my vim configuration let me go ahead and bring up my Vim config, and you can actually go through and look at what I've get, got for VimRC. So I'll bring that up on the screen um, for VimRC. So let me do that, and I'll do a vi.vimrc, and I'll pop that in. And I'll, uh, I think I can get this. No, I can't. I cannot put this in, in the description because it has angle brackets. I can take off this part though, the Vim distro options. I can take that off. So anyway, there's my, my VimRC right here. Just the options here. Setting the background to dark. Got the syntax on. The crypt, if we're gonna encrypt files, I'm using Blowfish, etc. So in this case, I've got Vim set up. The only three things you need to know with Vim, that's I for insert, escape colon WQ, WQ for write and quit, and escape colon Q exclamation for quit and get out without saving. So let's vi sys backup.sh. And first thing we're gonna do is a shebang bin bash. And we'll say what it is. Well, we give our name, you know, our name, date, like that. Um, and if you wanna do the date like uh, 2024, 04, 23 dot, and what is it? 1330 hours, something like that's fine. Over here, we'll go uh, backup script. If I get straight, backup script. And I'll put uh, SQL and file system. So, the very first thing we're going to do is we're going to define some variables here. And let's say var date. So, var date, we're going to put a back tick there. If you can see that right there, I'm going to make this a little bit bigger. Try to emphasize this for you. That is a back tick. This is a single quote. That's a double quote. So the back tick is over next to the number one key on an English keyboard. Or if you're using um, an English with a combination, another keyboard, then usually it's just to the left of the number one key. So right there we have var date, and we're gonna give actually the date. So the date command, which takes plus percent Y for year, and then percent lowercase m for month and lowercase d for d. So just like that, that's our var date. Next, I'm gonna do a var name. And now the var name, I'm just gonna type host name here. Now, I'll hit escape colon WQ, pop out of this. And if I type host name, just like this, you can see it gives me my server host name. That's if you did actually edit cat Etsy host name and then reboot, it should be there. So let's go back over and we'll look at the sys backup script. We have host name there. And I'm emphasizing the back tick here, the grave mark or that backwards tick mark right there, the back tick, as that runs a command without doing the dollar sign, double parentheses, the command, etc. You can just run the command directly like that. 
All right, now we're gonna make sure we have a directory to put our backups. So I'm gonna say we're gonna use opt for the backup directory. So we'll go over here and say, um, if does not exist a directory, so that's an exclamation with the D is do not exist directory, opt backups. And we'll go ahead and, nice. We'll go over here and say then mkdir opt backups. Now we know that opt already exists, but just in case it doesn't, you can put a dash p there to be sure, like that, and do a phi. There you go. Now we've got that, so we've got the, the if this directory does not exist, make it. Fantastic. Now we're gonna go over and we're gonna set up an if statement that if a certain backup does not exist, then go ahead and create the backup. Well, we don't know about that yet. We can't create the if statement until we know what we're calling the backups. So we just set this if and we'll put dot, dot, dot there. And we just know that there's gonna be more to come on that right there. So that's gonna be more to come. So let me make this a little bit smaller because it is filling up my screen. <laughs> so I'm gonna put a few comments in here just to make it easier to follow. And we'll say, ensure that the backups directory exists. And down here, I'm gonna say, do not backup if the backup exists, right there. And then over here, I'm gonna go ahead and create the backup. Now it keeps, it keeps auto indenting here for me, which is just a great feature. Uh, but I don't need that yet because that if I'm going to go ahead and comment that out right now. Okay, so what are we going to call it? Well, first of all, tar is what we're going to use for a backup. So we're going to do tar create zip and we're going to make a file. What are we going to call the file? Well, it's going to be an opt backups and we're going to call it dollar sign var name. That's going to be our host name dot dollar sign var date right there dot and we could call this whatever we could say you know file system backup backup whatever um something a little descriptive so i'll just be uh well, let's just say file system file system .tar .gz. okay now this right here is telling us tape archive or tar make a which is called a tape archive but we're going to make a directory i mean i'm sorry we're going to make a backup we're going to create it. The C means create. The Z means use gzip to zip it. And the file means don't put it out to a stream, but put it out to an actual file. This is our file name. And this file name is huge. So that's a huge file name. Now I did put the var underscore there, which makes my variables a lot longer. This could be variable X. This could be variable Y, right? You can make your variables whatever you want but I'm putting the dollar sign var underscore there and the var underscore here so that you know how variables work. And this is a variable, it's not an array, it is just a variable. So we'll just go right here, we have variable. When we define it in shell script, we simply just name it. It's actually about the same thing as Python. Now there is a caveats with that, but about the same thing in Python. If we're doing this in Perl, then we would have to well, if we're using strict formatting in Perl, we would have to say my var date. We'd have to specify it. We would have to actually declare the variable, but we don't here. So we just say, okay, this is the variable. It equals this. That is our declaration done. All right, great. We come down here. We got the dollar sign, meaning we're referring back to this variable here. That's the dollar sign there. So we're not recreating it. We're referring to it. And we've got the var date dot file system tar gz just like that now what are we going to put in it well there's some you know some things we might want to exclude um this is something that we might want to exclude in this system and that is how do you do that well first of all exclude you type exclude equals and this is gonna be a single quote oh let's see root dot ssh we, we don't want the SSH directory in there because you may have keys in here and you don't want your private keys shared in a backup that's going over to the op directory and then possibly being backed up to a remote folder. So you don't want that SSH folder in there, right? So we want to exclude that, but then what do we want to include? Well, we want to include the Etsy directory. We want to include the root directory. 
um, let's include var, and we can use braces expansion here, var, dub, 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 and var log, right? We can do both of those. Now, I think in var log, there's actually a journal file, which we probably don't want to. So if we don't want the journal file, we need to exclude that. The journal file is just a huge file there. So I'm going to go to exclude right there. And on that exclude, I'm going to do this var log journal right there. And I could be wrong. It may not have a journal file in there, but I think it does. Um, and so I'm going to go ahead and compensate for that. And there you go. So we've got that typed out. And what this is going to do for us, this is actually going to create a backup for us. And we can run this right now and watch it create the directory and watch it do the backup. When we do that, and which we're going to do MySQL backups too, but when we do that, we get to see the process. And so over here where I've got these, these pound symbols, I'm going to change that, which once again, we're done. We're done with this command. We're done, right? We think we're done. So I'm going to go over here and where I've got that comment, I'm going to change that to an echo. And then right over here, I'm going to say echo. And that's the backup. We just know it's the backup. And that's it. I'm going to hit escape colon W Q. So whenever you hit escape, get say out of insert mode. I is insert mode. So I insert escape to get out of it. Colon W Q. That is, of course, a colon command. W is right and Q is quick. Just like that. Now I'm going to change the permissions in this file. So I'm going to it. And I'm going to give everybody permissions to run this thing. So you can do 770 if you want to. And that gives the user a group, which is root and root. And then nobody else permissions. Or you do a 700. And that's just the user can run it. Whatever you want to do, right? So I'm going to do a 775 sys backup right there. If we look in here, we can see that now root and everybody can run the backup script. Of course, not everybody can get in the root directory. So that's a moot point. But let's go ahead and run it now. I'm going to throw a time on there to see how long it takes. And I'm going to run this back. Oh, first, sorry. First, let's look over the op directory. Nothing in the op directory. So let's go ahead and sys backup, run this. So ensure the backups directory exists. Did that. And it's going to go through and do that. And tar actually says removing the leading slash from member names. Do we want that in there? We probably don't. Now what it's doing is saying it's removing the leading slash. That means you're, you can actually restore this to another directory and it's not going to use an absolute path for you. So that's, that's useful. That's great, right? However, we don't want this printed out every time we run this. There are a couple of ways to get rid of this. We can actually say, yeah, yeah, well, go ahead and, and keep the leading slash. We can do that with a, a dash capital P in our tar. But I'm going to show you a universal way to get rid of standard out. So every time this runs, it's going to, to run this standard out there. Now, before I do that, I'm going to look in the op directory. So let's check the op directory. And you see we now have a backups directory. And if we go to backups, you'll see we now have the file system backup right there. So op, op backups, and our backup did work. So that's great. OK, that's super. But let's get rid of this message right here, which is called, it's out to standard error. So zero is standard in one is standard out and two is standard error. So how do we get rid of that? Well, let's look at it. Let's pop back into our script, sys backup right here. And we're going to go over to the end. And at the very end, we're going to tell it, which, uh, why do I have a single quote there? Oh, that's the exclude. <laughs> I was like, why am I putting, okay, yeah, it's an exclude statement. Okay, so I've got this statement here. And I'm going to say, okay, anything that comes out, of standard error, send it to dev null. Just like that. Just send it to dev null, be done with it, and, and it's gone. So let's see if that works. We'll save that. I'll run this backup. Just checking to make sure it exists. It's running the backup again. Notice there is no leading slash member names there. If I look in the slash opt backups, we'll see, oh, look, it's there, and it was updated. Let's see what time it is. It was updated just now. So it did rewrite it. Remember, we have not created the if statement yet, the conditional, to not rewrite the backup. So right now it's it's rewriting the backup. So that's perfect. We got rid of it. Now let's look at that. So oops, <laughs> just ran it again. All right, let's go back up to VI. 
And here on VI, you can see this two greater than dev null right there. What that says is everything that's standard error, send that out to slash dev null, which is nowhere. So take all the standard error output, send it to dev null. Great place to put it if you don't want it to come on the screen. Of course, you won't get any errors, so if anything errors out, you'll never know. But there's a, there's a solution for you. You can also take all regular output combined with error output and send that to dev null too, but I don't want to get too far off topic here. So let's go ahead and move on and we're going to do a MySQL dump. So we're going to confirm that MySQL dump works. So I'm going to go over here and go MySQL dump, see if it's there. I'm going to type WordPress right here. And we'll just say out to uh, wordpress.sql. I'm going to do that really fast and see if it's there. Okay, it's there. Fantastic. So we have our WordPress database. Everything is there. It is straight up text, right? So we got our WordPress database. We can do that. So I'm going to remove that now. WordPress SQL, get rid of that. And what I typed to get that was MySQL dump. MySQL dump right there, WordPress, and I outputted it to WordPress SQL. Well, we're actually going to do a little something different with that. So let's go ahead and take part of that command. And over here, I'm going to go in and I'm going to put a MySQL dump WordPress. And I'm going to pipe that to gzip. So I'm going to say gzip-1 showing that we can pipe output. So we can pipe that output to gzip, which is going to zip it, which one is the least compact, you know, not a whole lot of compression. Opt backups, and we want to do the var name var date thing again. So we're going to do var name var date dot right there. And in this case, it's going to be WordPress dot SQL. We are zipping it, so it's dot gz. Just like above, when we create this, it's a dot tar file, but we are zipping it, so we name it dot gz. Do you have to? You do not. You can name it dot happiness, whatever you want to put there. It doesn't matter. But if you're going back to look at it later, especially 10 years down the road or a lot of the stuff I've looked at is over 20 years old. So when you go back and you look at it in 25 or 30 years, you might go, what? What is that? <laughs> but if you use standard conventions, then you'll know what it is. So now we have the, the MySQL dump, which doesn't generate any errors there for us, so that's good. And we can do that, but we only want this to happen if that doesn't exist. And so let's see if I can, if I remember the right syntax for this. And I'm gonna say, if it does not exist, uh, this thing right here, the file system backup, then tar that. And I'm going to say else if, so looking at other things, if this directory doesn't exist, I'm just going to say else if, oops, there, else if this directory doesn't exist right here, which is going to be our, what is it, WordPress, there we go, WordPress SQL right there. Then my SQL dump right there. Fine. Now we can do it this way. Oh, oops, we can't do it that way because that's wrong. Um, if that doesn't exist, bing right there. Okay. So we can do it this way where we run it in, in if if. Um, over here, I'm going to take out the echoes. I'm going to make those back to comments before I forget. So over here, we've got the if statement, then do this, else if, then do that, and then be finished. Okay, all right, great. Well, that, that's one way to go through and look at things. We can also say, let's end this one. Phi is how you end it. Go back. And then say if, then phi. So right there, we got the do not backup. And here we'll say, file system backup and down here we'll say MySQL backup just like that so now we've got a couple of backups in there 
a couple of other things we can do here. One is in the end, we can say echo. I'm going to put the extended attributes in the echo so I can go ahead and put like var date on there. So we'll go like var date like this. Um, ah, backslash T, put a tab in there and say uh, local backup complete just like this. And I'll pop that to var log syslog. Now I don't have any error checking in here, verifying that the contents are correct in the backups. So be aware of that, but there you go. So now this should run all the backups only if they don't exist. And then it should echo a little thing to syslog right there and saying that it was there. Now, if you want it to echo on the screen, which I do right now, I can go through and say pipe T dash A right there varlog syslog and that'll echo on the screen just for this kind this this time right here so sys back i'm gonna throw a time in front of that see how long this takes and this is local backup complete let me go over here and look at op backups and sure enough it's complete we've got the year the day i'm sorry the year the month and the day and the file system and the wordpress done now, it did not run the backup again because it already exists there. If it didn't exist, it would have run again. Now, if we do a tail var log syslog, then you'll see that down here, we've got this local backup complete. I also have a whole bunch of uh, uh, cron taps there, making sure that my resolve.com points to the right name servers. But in any case, local backup complete right there. And so we have our backup complete. It did record it to a log, but now we need to schedule that. So let's go ahead and schedule this. And we're gonna say, okay, since we do a daily backup, let's go to VI Etsy cron tab. And in Etsy cron tab, we're gonna go over and create a new entry. And we're gonna say daily backup right here. And we'll say every day at midnight, so at zero, zero of every day run as root root sys backup dot sh just like that now with the zero zero you can just put like zero zero if you want to and i put a tab right here i've heard some places that say don't put tabs there don't put tabs here just use white space ah, i mean just use a space well the tabs count as white space and and I've been doing this for about 25, eight years, 30, oh my goodness. It's been 30 years. It's been, it's been a long time. And I've never run into a problem using the tabs here. And I use Linux exclusively. So I, you know, since 2000, I've used Linux exclusively on my desktop. So that's 24 years of exclusive Linux use. Not to mention, you know, all the years I used it with uh, Unix and Novell Netware and other things. <clears throat> so, right here, works for me. Your mileage may vary. Just be aware of that. But that's your backup. That's all I'm going to do for the backup video here. I'm going to leave that on the screen here. So we go VI, Sys Backup, and you can see that. I'm going to make it a little bit smaller there so it all fits. I hope that this has helped. And next, we'll look at another cron tab that may be helpful for you in the future.